Okay, well. Okay, seven o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting of uh, Milton Plan Commission for uh, Tuesday, June 22nd to order. Okay, the first item on the agenda is uh, Mark and Daphne Rokal. Uh, Commissioner Brar? Here. Uh, Commissioner Bruce? I'll just, uh, Randy Bruce? Here. Per Paulson? Here. Dan Ramsey? Here. Right. Mike Slavish? Here. <clears throat> Five present, Commissioner John Schaefer is absent tonight and we have one vacancy. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mark. So um, it's seven o'clock, so I'm going to open the public hearing for general implementation plan amendment for Dream Kitchens 3600 Venture Avenue. Anybody who wants to speak either for or against it. And I'll just say so, for the record, Mayor, uh, that we did not okay. receive any statements regarding this matter, either by phone or, or via email. We didn't receive any statements. Neither have I, so. Uh, if there are no one, anyone who wants to speak Speak either on for or against this, and this is the notice of public hearing you can see on the screen. Okay, there are no takers. I'm going to close that part of the meeting, and we are going to go to the approval of the minutes. So, need a motion to approve the Planned Commission minutes of June 8, 2021. Raise your name approval. Slavish will second. Okay, motion by Elder Ramsey and second by Commissioner Slavish. Any changes, corrections, anything? Okay, so the motion is to approve the minutes of the Plan Commission meeting for June 8, 2021. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion passes. We are on to item number one on the agenda. This is the general implementation plan amendment. Dream Kitchens 3600 Venture Avenue. Mark? Yes, Mayor. The reason this is before you tonight is because the general implementation plan that exists currently uh, pertaining to the three lots, Laser Express and the two vacant lots, the current GIP lists research and office uses for this lot that fronts Highway 12. The reason why the amendment is necessary is because we have an application for a home furnishing store that incorporates a showroom and warehouse, and the building setbacks are significantly reduced from the <coughs> minimum distances listed in the existing zoning regulations. So it's both the use and the setbacks that require the GIP amendment. And I know that the applicant is being represented by Dan Bertler from Supreme Structures. If you have any questions or if you wish for him to you know, present his, their, their uh, application. It, it, and I am here. Uh, if anyone has any questions, and first and foremost, I'd like to say um, extremely excited to get back to Middleton. We have not been in Middleton for a long time. And uh, it's nice to see all the faces that I used to deal with. So I think Looking at your agenda and the imagery that we provided, I think lays everything out, but I'm here to answer questions. Thank you, Dan. Really appreciate that. What I have seen looks great. Can't really complain about a thing. Okay, any questions? I don't see any raised hands. Okay, so then I need a motion to... Randy? Awesome. Randy Bruce? And then Kurt Paulson. Uh, I think this question is for staff first. Um, what was the setback dimension? Sub what, what should that have been along the um, uh, belt line there? Um, previously, 
I think I have that in the staff report. Um, on page two of my staff report, let me just check here. Building setbacks originally were gonna be the front yard was supposed to be at least 20 feet. Side yard building setback at least 10. Rear yard uh, is 30 feet. There was no distinction between the side yard. Uh, it, it didn't distinguish the belt line as a side yard, which sometimes would be considered a street side. So the side yard setback would have been 10 feet. And, and we're comfortable with that reduction in setback because of the, the extreme width of the <clears throat> belt line right away? Yeah, I specifically, the first thing I did was reach out to DOT to see if they had any concerns about the change in setback. Obviously, there's also uh, one of the other factors is the impervious surface area. You know, how, it's more of the site being developed that doesn't, um, that can't, you know, how, how is the existing detention basin that's there? Is that going to be able to handle a change in the footprint from what was originally envisioned? And they're actually reducing the impervious surface area that, than what was originally planned. So it's just a, it's a stormwater design issue. Uh, in terms of the setback, yes, there's not gonna be a building uh, ever located across the property line. There is a significant setback there. The DOT has no plans to widen the road. Um, they bought plenty of right of way when uh, they built the highway bypass 20 years ago. So from a staff standpoint, we did not have any concerns or objections to it. Do you have any, any uh, estimate as to how far it would be from the bike path? Uh, Dan, do you happen to know that, Dan Bertler? Yeah, I do not, but it's fairly significant. The bike path is right along the belt line there. We're pretty far away. Um, I, if I had to guess, I would have to say we're 100 feet, 150 feet. Oh, no, it's not that much, I don't think. It's not that much? No. Um, it's if we can pull up a site plan um, or the aerial, maybe well, I can also measure it. Actually, why don't I do that quickly? I can measure it. Quickly. Yeah, I, you'd probably be better off doing that, Mark. I'm, I'm sitting if I was in person, I probably could do this much easier. Oh, I, I can pull it up pretty quickly because the, no, it, um, all, I have to do is me, all I have to do is measure from the lot line, it'll be within a couple feet. There you go to, to the uh, the uh, bike path. So, yeah, I, I would be surprised if it's even 50 feet. I'll find but, out. But that's pretty good. 50 feet is good. You know, the, the, I just want to, I want to make sure we've thought this, uh, thought the setback issue through. Obviously, once, once the building's there, um, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to, to make any adjustments. I think the, the design is fantastic and I think the use is fantastic. I just want to make sure that we, we have logic for uh, reducing the setback in this location. Yeah, that is an excellent point, Randy. I, uh, unfortunately, the layer has not, the, the, um, the aerial <laughs> photography layer hasn't pulled up yet. Oh, now, now here it comes. All right. Um, the measurement is... Uh, about 50 feet. Let me just, oh. I lost my spot here. Let me just try it again. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually about 50 feet. All right. You got me on that one, Mark. <laughs> no, no worries. Well, I think I think this this location uh, benefits from having the uh, having the, the 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 very wide right away there. The the bike path is actually gives a little bit of a buffer to the to the exit ramp, you know, which is an additional uh, distance away from the, the main travel lanes. Um, so I, I could see where this um, setback reduction would make sense in this location. And I would add that the DOT, um, and it's in the staff report, the DOT um, specifically stated they didn't want to see any encroachment across the vertical plane mm -hmm. of, the, of the lot line, which makes complete sense. We wouldn't want to see that either. Yep. Um, and so I had that in the recommendation um city and wistat approval the stormwater management plan was in there as well 
uh, no encroachment of any portion of the building across the vertical plane and no equipment may cross the east property line without secu securing the proper permission and or permits from DOT. So those were the three that came up from DOT. And and Dan, do you is there there's no room to move the building north at all? Is that it, is that you know correct? I'll, I'll be on, I'll be honest, Randy. We're at a point where you can spend a whole bunch of money, and yes, we can move that building. Building. I have a little bit of um, maneuverability with a loan dock in the backside um, until I spend the money on civil engineering and look at the tension, the existing, and what I'm dealt with as for stormwater, um, what's available. That building is going to shift ever so slightly, and if we can push it back, by all means, we will. Um, that next stage was basically hiring an engineering firm, spent a whole bunch of money. And we, Kevin Schmidt, who I'm representing, owner of Jim Kitchens, really didn't want to go down that, that side, spend $50,000, <laughs> unless we we're close with the GIP um, change. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would, I mean, honestly, I would be more comfortable if we could get uh, a step back there uh, just so that we could be more consistent with the GIP. If it's doable, I think just moving moving your building north would probably resolve or at least get it much closer to the to the uh, um, you know the, the the ten foot setback that that would be indicated. Um, there. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. All right. Um, the only point I would have is that there are, there's a residential area to the north as well. Um, and I don't know how far you are cutting into the hill, Dan. Uh, it, from what it, I recall, exactly. So having that buffer from the, from the north, actually this site plan provides more of a buffer than the original GIP. Yep. So um, this actually had you know, greater setback distance between the houses and the, and the uh, building. And that's exactly why we locate the building where we locate it. Um, the further I go in that hillside, the more retaining wall I have. And we felt it was more adequate coming here tonight with that setback and putting in that corner versus pushing it north. Would, would we be able to uh, revisit that setback during the SIP phase? In other words, you, get your, you do your engineering, you take a look at it closer, <clears throat> yeah, you, you'd be able to analyze uh, your stormwater requirements and so forth, and uh, and uh, if if possible, uh, slide the building north just to give us some breathing room there. My advice, Commissioner Bruce, would be since ultimately the SIP you approve has to be reasonably has to be consistent with the GIP. Um, if that's a concern you have now you'd want to mention that as part of the GIP approval um, that, that's how I would handle that if I if I were you okay thank you okay so Randy you're done right I am done thank you okay Kurt Paulson so Mark uh, I guess I'll first follow up on that so what we're being asked is both a GIP amendment specific to this use and this parcel, right? Not to amend the GIP overall. And then right. the second issue is to amend the setbacks just for this parcel and this use, right? Or is it written to amend the setbacks for the whole GIP? I, no, it's, that's, a, that's a good question. I would say the setback is specific to this parcel. I wouldn't say it's to the, I mean, the issue before you is, is both the use and the setbacks. They don't have to necessarily be linked to each other as far as I'm concerned, but um, right. you know, whatever, I mean, if Dream Kitchens is there for 20 years and then we have a different use, obviously the setback's not gonna change. So um, so I would say the setback is, and, and use are the two factors you need to consider here. I'm, I'm less worried about the setback and I, I'll just make a comment about the use. Um, so the use is a showroom and what is that closest to in our current zoning ordinances? It looks a lot like a B2 or a B3 retail use, right, Mark? Um, yeah, I would say it's a B2. Uh, well, 
So let me, let me just say where I'm going with this. Um, we've made a very specific uh, effort to um, reduce kind of retail uses in industrial or employment zones um, in our comprehensive plan for the reason that um, you know, industrial land is usually cheaper. And so uh, it looks like the GIP uh, specifically left out the retail components of B2, right? That it focused on light manufacturing, warehousing, um, research and office, and the comprehensive plan shows as, as a business park. Now, I think uh, Randy and others make a good point that this is right along uh, the highway. And a showroom is kind of a different use than a retail use. So it's not going to get a lot of uh, short run traffic like a Walmart or a Target, right? People come in, uh, they schedule an appointment, they're shopping, and there's some kind of manufacturing or storage on site. So I have no problem with this as a use. I just want to say that, you know, we want to generally, we don't want this to be precedential that we are expected to approve uh, kind of a retail use in the next parcel, uh, given that it's right near uh, Laser Express, and which is a manufacturing sort of facility. I hope that made sense. I understood it. I, I, I would just say from a, as the zoning administrator, I would agree that this is a hybrid of B2, B3, and frankly, industrial because of the warehouse component. So this is exactly yeah. what, sorry, go ahead. How much of the floor area? I mean, if, if we were to assign a principal use to this, it looks more retail um, than office. We just we just worry if eventually if we put customer facing retail buildings in the same exact location as industrial or business facing buildings, we have potential traffic and uh, truck delivery conflicts. But it doesn't look like that would be the case here. So I just want to flag that again for our future use that we don't want all of our business parks gobbled up by retail uses. It, it, but this makes sense couple, here. Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand, Kurt. Um, the footprint, the base footprint is about 17,000 square feet. Um, what you're not seeing is actually a second floor for offices that are part of that mezzanine before that glass starts. So it is a hybrid. We do have warehousing in the back. We have office above, and then we have the showroom. So <laughs> it, it is really, it's hard to fit this peg in the in the right spot because there's three different things happening at this location hence why we try to really make it while you're driving down the belt line something really cool to look at with everything going on i'll just say i, totally I agree with you Dan. So, yeah kurt you got some more oh, questions just, when we get to the sip stage we'll ask the question about the uh architectural element that's a sign is it a sign or an architectural element but uh, that's all the questions I had. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Next one is Dan Ramsey and then Mike Slavish. Uh, so I just had a question, kind of piggybacking on the on the use for it's a showroom, a warehouse, and office space. Do you do you does this business then do you go out and install these these kitchens, or are you simply design and sales, or do you have do you have crews that you understand what I'm saying? Uh, all three of the above. Currently, Dream Kitchens is on Verona Road um, in Madison, Wisconsin. And what Kevin's trying to do here, his designers are going to be utilized in the office space. They're the ones meeting with the clients day in and day out and or at their location, at their house. Um, they will have displays on what they're selling. And <clears> as the... <throat> Cabinets come in, they will prepackage those cabinets in the back as they get unloaded and those will be palletized. Once that job is ready, that pallet goes out to the residential house as a pallet and it gets shipped to that place. So it's not like it is a construction company. Um, it's really unloading delivery of appliances. Uh, a lot of sub zero appliances will be. If you purchase a kitchen, you order a stove and a refrigerator and X cabinets, everything gets shipped there, it gets palletized, and it gets shipped out to the job when the job's ready. Okay. Thank you. Next one is Mike Slavish. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, Dan, good to see you again. Um, just, just a couple of comments. I, I support the project. I think it's a it's a great a great addition for that particular site. You know, Kurt, I guess comment I had to your question was just, I'm not sure how is this any different than the Lexus dealership, you know, immediately to the south. I mean, it, I think they're, you know, I would argue they are of comparable uses, kind of a quasi, you know, retail. You know, obviously there's a maintenance shop there, you know, very similar to what it sounds like Dan's describing for this yep. facility as well. So I would I would argue that they are consistent with, you know, the adjacent use that's here. Um, and then Dan, I, I guess I, just a question. So the facility that um, Kevin has on Verona Road, is that still gonna stay? Is this gonna be a second location? Or is this gonna be well, a facility? I, I think to answer your question, Mike, it was nice seeing you as well. Um, to answer your question, I really think Kevin's planning for long-term here. Um, <laughs> not quite sure what's going on with Verona Road as it currently sits. With the reconstruction of Verona Road, uh, things have changed his his um, imagery on Verona Road kind of dropped below the road. Uh, it's hard to get in, hard to get out. And I think Kevin probably looks at more Middleton as the long term as he transitions to his sons. Okay, great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. Any, Dan Ramsey, you have your hand up? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to take it down. I'm good. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments so then I would say that uh, your pictures and everything looks great awesome so I'm very pleased I do have a question for you I don't know if you do any research and development if there will be any designing of anything here or it, it's mostly you know like you were saying the equipment comes and you palletize and send it uh, Mayor, all the designing of any remodeling of kitchens or additions will happen at this location. Um, oh, literally well, the okay. second floor is all office for the designers. Okay, well, that's that's great. Uh, okay, so Mark, you have your hand up. I simply wanted to add to my staff recommendation that I, and I emailed this to you before the meeting, that I recommend you find that the rezoning request is consistent, or that the GIP amendment is consistent with the comp plan. I, I normally would have that okay. as, as part of the uh, recommendation. Okay, so I recommend to the Common Council approval of the GIP, and it is in uh, conformity with our comp plan, and uh, it's contingent on the items included in the planning staff report. So I need a second. I'll second that. Okay. Awesome. Now, further questions or comments? Look at that beautiful picture. So, it looks nice. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to recommend to the excuse Common me, Mayor. Council. Mayor. Mayor. Mayor, excuse yep. me. I'd Sorry, like to offer. I'd, I'd oh, like to offer. Yeah, yes, yes. I'd like to offer a friendly amendment and see yep, if uh, if we could get uh, uh, a, a setback of a, a, a minimum setback of five feet along the along the uh, belt line that that would be a reduction of a significant reduction in and of itself and it would you know uh, give give uh, us uh, I think um, uh, I, I don't I, I don't want to get into a position where we're, we're uh, uh, putting buildings on lot lines unless unless, uh, unless we uh, you know it, it was intended to originally and I, I'm not sure that this was the case here so I'd offer that as a friendly amendment and see if uh, okay if that proceed that's fine with me and I also looked at the DOT report I think that will make them a little bit happier Dan even though so so I think that's a good idea Kurt is that okay with you too uh, set back from the property line because you property said from the line, highway, because yeah, yeah. no, there's a line. there's a <clears throat> distance between the property line and the highway of how many feet? It's in the staff report somewhere. Um, um, this, the lot line to the bike path, I said, was roughly 50 feet, um, maybe slightly under 50, like 49 feet. Okay. And what I'm hearing Commissioner Bruce say is that 
you are adding a bullet point to request the applicant to strive for a minimum side setback of five feet, comma, recognizing that this would reduce the rear setback. Um, because I think that's what I heard you say earlier was the way to achieve this. Is that correct? I don't want to put that, words that, uh, that That is correct. And right now, um, you know, you, we, it appears that there's a 4.28 foot setback on uh, on the south side, and then a 2.27 foot setback on the on the uh, east side. So I don't, I'm not sure that there's going to be much maneuvering that needs to happen to get that accomplished. But it'll give us some breathing room. It, it, and as uh, Randy, I I don't think that's a big issue here. We're current, tonight is are we getting are we on the same page now? Once mm -hmm. the approval heads, we can really get down to business. And if you want five feet, we can start looking at moving that building accordingly to our site walk, our site development and turning radiuses and take it further for the SIP. That should be achievable with that five foot. I think it's an excellent idea because I looked at those DOT comments. You know, they were talking about those overhangs and things. So, so I think it will make even DOT happy as well. So, Kurt, is that okay with you or uh, you have yes. further questions? Yes. Okay. Okay, so all those in favor of the motion to recommend to the Common Council approval of the GIP, which is in conformity with our comp plan, with the amendment uh, made by Randy Bruce, uh, try to have a setback of five feet. And then uh, it's contingent on the items including the plan staff report. All those in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passed and, and, and celebrate now. So move on to the next. And, and Mayor, for the record, um, I'm not recording. Commissioner Bruce is making a motion because he asked for that to be a friendly amendment and you accepted it that way. So I, even though yeah, you just repeated yeah. it with his name, his name will not be attached to the motion. Just so you, yeah. just to be clear. Okay. That's okay. As long as we recognize him for what he said. So. Thank you, okay. everyone. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Let's all dream on, so that's a good thing. So, okay, <laughs> scheduled public hearing rezoning from B3 to B2, Nicholas Hanna, 3207, Laura Lane. This looks like a great thing to do. Mark? Yeah, this is here before you because the, the new owner of the building uh, also is, is proposing a use that's not exactly allowed by zoning. And so that requires the, re the zoning uh, map amendment, and that's the, why you need a hearing. And so it's very straightforward. It's, it's we're recommending the hearing for July 13th at 7:10. Okay, I, I make that motion to uh, schedule the public hearing on July 13th at 7:10 p.m. Kurt, you want to I'll second it? I'll or second that. It? Yep. <laughs> Either way, I think it looks really good to have a primary care clinic and physician's office. I think this is great. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, so any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor of the motion to schedule a public hearing for a re rezoning from B3 to B2, the Nicholas Hanna, 3207 Laura Lane, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we are on to wheel and sprocket. Design review, second story edition, wheel and sprocket, 6641 University Avenue, Mark. This is the applicant is present, um, uh, Gary Tree. This is before you tonight, just simply for design review, no change in the footprint. They are proposing a second story addition to produce a storage area that would not be open to the public. The showroom area would not increase in size. That's my understanding. And, and Gary Tree is available to answer questions and describe the project. Okay. Well, the color is very, very bright and colorful, right? <laughs> okay, so Gary's here. Please raise your hand if you have any questions or comments. Well, let me, let me just thank you for taking the time to review this. Um, the, the proposal is to just add a second floor storage uh, on this building as Mark had indicated. 
And we would continue the existing finishes up uh, from the existing single story. So you've got some IFAS and some brick um, and, and some additional windows that would bring some natural light into the uh, upper area. Uh, other than that, it's just an unchanged um, footprint. So there's nothing really fancy going on. They're just trying to create a place for them uh, to store the bicycles uh, before they assemble them and uh, sell them downstairs. Okay, any questions for Gary? Randy Bruce. Uh, just uh, maybe not for Gary, but uh, for uh, Mark, do, are you able to, do we have the other two elevations? Um, <clears throat> that's the original on top and the, the new yeah. one on the bottom. Thank you. And then, and then the, uh, what about the other, the, the uh, uh, other side, I guess it'd be the east side. The east side is a, is there's a, it's a common building. So what you're seeing on the lower elevation here with the, uh, the parapets up above are the, the two hour fire separation masonry. Wall. I see. Right. So That's there, right. That and Scott's what used to be Scott's bakery. Right. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Any more questions, Randy, or you're okay with that? Yeah, I, th I think the building's attractive. I think it's a, the, it'll be an okay. improvement. Looks nice. Yeah, I'm pleased. So, any other questions or comments? Just okay, a quick, 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 quick question. It, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. It's the same color as what, what's already there, right, Gary? Yes. Yeah, we're not okay. proposing any different colors. Uh, yeah. We, we would match. And illustrations like this can be a little deceiving. Yeah, I, I wish we would have, in retrospect, now had some photographs of the uh, existing building to show you. The the one thing that uh, we are still looking at is the the organization of the wheel and sprocket signage on the face of the building. Uh, there's we're showing it exactly where it lives right now. There's some uh, discussion about uh, balancing that that empty area above it and raising that up, but we would not change the size of it. We would just organize it so it's a, a little more balanced. Okay. And Kurt, you got more no, questions? I, I have the uh, Google Street View up on my computer if they, people want to see it, but I think everybody knows where this is. So it's a, okay. it's oh, a well-designed yeah. building oh, yeah. as it is. I pass by it quite often. So. Every day. Oh. Yes. Okay. I have, I have a question, Mayor. I have a question um, yep, of the applicant, ahead. if that's okay. So, Gary, are you yeah, saying ahead, this is? I hadn't heard that you're looking at. You, you're talking about the change you would make is just to the signage about well, where that. Uh, we're, we're yes. It, it, to put it to a point, uh, the sign wheel and sprocket there uh, would look better if it were up. Yes. I see. Okay. Yeah, that's it, and and so it's just relocating it. I think if you, as part of a motion, would just recognize that you can give staff the discretion to am amend the placement of the final details uh, for the signs that, you know, that would be helpful. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I'll, so- I'll make that a motion then. Um, since you just mentioned it, Mark, whatever your motion you recommended, um, recommend okay. approving the design changes contingent on resolution of engineering staff comments and allowing staff to approve a similarly sized sign um, or yeah, is that good enough? That, was staff providing final approval of sign placement? Yes, yeah. exactly what I said. Okay, so Randy or uh, Bruce? Slavish will second that. Okay, Mike Slavish second it. Any further questions or comments? Okay, so the motion is to approve the design review for second story addition for wheel and sprocket 6641 University Avenue with, a, um, with the option that uh, the staff could review the uh, design placement. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We are on to, I'm going to change, we're going to go to item number five. There are a lot of people waiting here and then come, come back to item number four. 
So the this is the concept view for Bell Fall 44 acres, four parcels east of 4887 Parmenter Street. Abby Atun, or who is going to take it? Um, Mayor, I believe the applicant, um, Kathleen Slattery Moshkow, is also here. Um, she would also like to present some. Okay, of the all right, Kathleen, you are up. Let's watch your presentation. Well, um, I'm so happy to be here. We took a long time with this concept. We wanted to do the beauty of the land justice and to create just a, a really wonderful place. The only additions that I have tonight in terms of an, any kind of presentation is that in the submission package, we did not show any kind of like direction that we were going architecturally. So the photos I'm gonna show are just concept photos, but it kind of will help show the direction that we're going. And then also there is one image that helps answer some of the feedback or some of the comments. Um, that uh, took place after we submitted the uh, the application. So let me let me pull this up. So as we talk about um, the housing, obviously we're we're going to be we're proposing a lot of different housing types, which I think is really exciting. And on the multifamily side, uh, side of things that align Parmenter, we're really looking for classic, timeless design. Um, overall, throughout the property, all the architecture, we want to look as not just short term, but very durable in terms of quality of construction, but also durable in terms of design, something that'll look great 30 years from now, 60 years from now, and we might be going for like even 100 years from now. So that like is, is again, these are just conceptual images to kind of give the, a feel for what we're looking to do. So it'll border the property, the multifamily will border the property, but it'll also serve as an invitation to everything that's beyond. And we're going to, um, we're designing a lot of peak of peekaboo through areas so that you, it'll be porous so that you can see the beauty beyond the buildings. But I just wanted to give a sense for where we were going because we believe that multifamily can be something amazing, something that people never want to move out of. And I think, um, you know, I think there's a need for that. I think there's a desire for it. And as we talk to even some of the younger generations that are really questioning home buying, um, they, you know, I, I think there's a longing for multifamily that is really beautiful. But then as we come into um, the single family homes, it's about the whole thing, the multifamily and the single family and the town homes and the shotgun homes, all of it will work together as one community. So it's not just that the multifamily is gonna be sitting there along Parman or isolated, everything works together as a village. And um, a lot of the single family homes, these are small parcels, tight knit community, tight, um, compa you know, um, uh, uh, very compact so that we could leave more land open for everybody to enjoy. So these are just, again, um, a few visuals to get a sense for things that developing that deep sense of community, walkability, um, bikeability. And then there will be some estate lots as well, not, not many, but where there will be a bigger, a slightly bigger lots where people who have a desire to build um, maybe a slightly larger home on a little bit bigger parcel as well. And then just a little bit of a, there, a, there will be a big focus on the amenities of the pro property, which there's a whole list in terms of not only the commercial amenities, but also the amenities um, in terms of like the sports area, the pickleball, the tennis, the basketball, the soccer, the, uh, the farms and everything. But I just kind of want to give a there's, we really wanted to spend a lot of time thinking through the use of the land so that no matter where you are on the property, it feels good. It feels like the land use is, ex ex is exceptional. So these are, again, just some concept images of like just these, these paths that are sneaking through the property and fire pits and courtyards and um, on the farm side of things, vertical, you know, working with vertical greenhouses and vertical farming um, and no-till a little low, no till plot and community gardens. And then up by the inn, um, just a handful of these wonderful little writing, writer's retreat cabins. And again, all of it to just create this wonderful place to be and that 
everything you would want to do throughout your day is right there or right down the road in downtown Middleton. So, um, and again, kind of this having that pond as this this beautiful feature, not only for the residents who live on site, but we really created this so that the everybody can enjoy this. There's lots of access to this property and, and a focus on an urban park as well. So I'm gonna leave it as at that. I Again, I have slides um, that when we get more into the specific questions um, that uh, our architects have put together that can help answer some of the other more technical questions. Well, it's very idyllic and uh, we saved that pond just for you, Kathleen. And uh, I like this, the park, the way you are handling this well fontaine, I think this is awesome. It, it is really very admirable what you're doing there. And keeping 50% of the place green space, wow, this is better than what Middleton has, 23, well, I don't, definitely is it about 20, about, yeah, 23 to 25. 23, 25, so keeping 50%, wow, we are all for it. So. Well, I certainly, you can tell I like it. So there is a one thing that as uh, Elder Ramsey would say too, we are very interested that uh, if there are people who can actually own or, own or occupied affordable home, duplexes or whatever, and you have a that concept somewhere because, uh, you know, those multi-story buildings are good, but, uh, you know, we want, people to have American dreams so where they can own something. So I'm sure you have that somewhere in, in your plan. So yeah, let anyway, me, um, that is, I'd like to hear more of that. Yeah, let me hold on. Let me, uh, let me pull up another one here. Um, Wow. And then let's see here. I'm going to go to the, the mix of um, housing so that everybody can okay. see that listing. In, in the back, oh, the, it's called the makeup. It's page 14 of the yes. packet. Yep. It, can everybody see that on the screen right now? No, Kathleen, it's not progressing. It's Melissa here. It's okay. not progressing. So you, does, I'm not does, quite um, sure what's going Does on. anybody else have it easily available, Mark? Or um, otherwise, I can make sure here. Let me see if I can. I'll, I'll stop sharing and then I'll start again and I'll pull up the new one. Thank you, Melissa. Here we go. Okay, so now if I go to- That's it. Yeah, you, you do have 740 units. So that's, that's great too, so. So this is so this this screen has the makeup. So it's 50% open space. We start with a, um, uh, you know, we have a transect that goes from low density to high density. The makeup of the housing is 560 multifamily units, 66 single family houses, which are comprised of state, estate homes, cottages, nest homes, shotgun homes, 40 condos, 36 apartments that are separate from the multifamily buildings, um, 29 townhouses and nine live work. And then the commercial that is there is there to serve the neighborhood and hopefully be so awesome that people want to come from us from outside the neighborhood as well. And there's a multiple of things there as well. So that in terms of um, really, as we looked at both the multifamily, but also the single family and the and the missing middle housing that's here, there's such a variety of sizes and access points. And that I think that's such that's really important in terms of like uh, pricing because th there's going to be multiple access points to be part of this community. The multifamily um, housing is going, going to go everywhere from multi-units up to family to like larger three bedrooms. And then um, in terms of the single family and the um, town homes, again, all of the, if you're looking at the single family, the estate homes, cottages, nest homes, and shotgun homes are also a variety of sizes. And again, provide a variety of access points financially for people. I'm set up a, don't know what the shotgun homes are, <laughs> maybe this, um, is, this is an interesting name, so. <laughs> yeah, they're, um, they're kind of like row houses attached, and sometimes they're attached and sometimes they're not. Um, can you guys oh, see okay. that? 
Oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, that so they will be affordable then, right? And then uh, let's see. Here's like a European view. Okay, okay. That that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. And they also can be um, they also can be detached. You know, um, okay. they don't have to be attached to each other. We have them drawn as attached right now. Excellent. Okay, any questions or comments to Kathleen? We just want to make sure that you can make it happen. So, okay, Kurt Paulson, then Randy Bruce. Yeah, um, so as you can imagine, I, I have lots of questions. Um, I do really uh, wanna say to the applicant, I really appreciate when, when people um, doing a concept plan hire uh, really good town planners, landscape architects to kind of give us the feel. Um, I wish more would do that and people know who I'm referring to. Um, can I ask, I guess, Melissa or one of your designers a transect question? It's one mm -hmm. of the first things that comes to mind is, I don't know if you can pull up the uh, concept plan, but mm -hmm. as you're coming into the property, I'll give you a second there. Yeah, as you're coming into the property off of Bellefontaine, uh, and Melissa knows what I'm talking about, right, is that Bellefontaine is kind of T three and a half. It's not quite T four, but it's it's a denser, smaller lot. Uh, even though it's kind of large singles on Bellefontaine, it's um, alley loaded. Uh, then you, because it's a one way circulation, you would turn right to go to where you're showing estate lots. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering about that transition as being somewhat uh, not connecting with the neighborhood next door because you're going from a pretty uh, dense single family product to a kind of a more estate lot. I was wondering if you would consider perhaps a um, more like the Muse or the shotgun houses there as well. Um, and then consider maybe moving the estate lots to that southern part of the eastern loop um mm -hmm. if that makes any sense it does and it's definitely I, and kurt i just want to say i think it was you that really got me thinking about all this because i think during the first concept review when we had the studio just sitting kind of standalone on the back 30 in this pastoral way and you really you know challenged us on it challenged me on that thought of like you know going from the misty valley to suddenly pastoral to and i really it, it stayed with me so we worked really hard on this but i think that is something that could could be um done and it's something i actually have talked before about to fill tab in terms of the possibility of moving those down Phil tab is our land planner he couldn't be here tonight unfortunately um, moving those down because then it also gives the state estate homes um, you know your your kind of have a pond view as well so I mean uh, I'm sure that that could be adjusted for that right especially as you're coming on Bellefontaine and you're taking that right to give it more of that compact feel there and then, yeah, and I was going to say, and you have the estate homes on the kind of uh, adjoining those existing hardwoods, and you're keeping those those hardwoods that are on the property, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that I think is also a really neat feature. Uh, the other issue I would I would raise, at least for preliminary discussions, is you show two uh, lanes separated by a boulevard coming into the property off Bellefontaine. But we have talked about the idea of not making Bellefontaine four lanes with a boulevard, but just keep it as two lanes, one in each direction. And then you show on the west side of the property uh, what looks like four lanes or two lanes exiting and two lanes entering, again, separated by a boulevard. And I just wanted you to think about and what that would mean is if we go forward with only a, a two lane without a boulevard, but just mm -hmm. one lane in each direction, what that would do to the traffic flow and the circulation. Because I think when we originally planned Bellefontaine, there was the idea of it needs to be an arterial, needs to be 135 foot right of way, four lanes. But I think the city's really moved away from that, or I hope the city's moved away from that, right, Mark? Uh, to well, a more I, I, I with you, Kurt, field. so, yeah, no, I'm with you. I think, uh, you know, Bellefontaine, Two lane is a lot better than four lane for the city. 
and uh, and that would also help Kathleen as well. She would have some more space there. So I'm I'm with you absolutely. At what right. point does that become like official? You know, so like as we're doing the design, like at what point do we know that that's like official? Because well, I love the idea. And as I was, uh, you know, I'm through Misty Valley a lot coming to that dead end, just accessing my property, you know, the property that way. And as I'm on, as I come through Bellefontaine on Misty Valley, there's kids playing in the road. It's a very, I mean, it's, it's an awesome area. That's really, that street is being used like an old fashioned neighborhood. And so, I mean, even from a mom, from that standpoint, I love the thought of that not becoming a four, a four lane, but for this property too. But, you know, at what point would we know? So Mark, what would it take to make that happen? Well, we're gonna discuss it tomorrow. Uh, I'm sure with our, uh, our weekly public works planning administration staff meeting. Um, this is an idea that obviously, uh, Kathleen, you've been promoting now for a few weeks and planning staff is very intrigued with it as we've given you that feedback already. Our city engineer, uh, noted the concern that this isn't what we originally planned. So we obviously need to resolve that internally here. Ultimately, it's a, a plan commission and common council decision, common council ultimately, obviously. Um, this has been officially mapped as a major corridor across the north side of Middleton. But as has been noted, the how we look at transportation facilities is evolving over the last decade. So, um, Mayor, all I can say is we'll, we'll discuss it tomorrow and, and uh, we'll take that through the uh, Public Works Committee as necessary and, and continue that discussion. Okay, my, so my Kathleen, business, you have your answer, so. Uh, quick question, this is Melissa. Um, is there anything that we can do to assist in that conversation, Mark? Um, I think, well, maybe setting up a meeting with why don't you ask us tomorrow after our, our meeting in the morning? Um, we'll have a, it will be a staff level discussion. Uh, the mayor often joins us as well. And then we can follow up with you after the meeting and, and suggest some next steps. It would probably be good to have a discussion with our engineering team. Sounds great, thank you. Yeah. And, thank you, Melissa. And then the only other yeah, question I have, and then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll let Randy go. The uh, Most of the apartments are shown as, at least on the, uh, bird's eye site plan is kind of um, uh, cottage or, or courtyard apartments. Is that the design you're going for? And uh, how many stories were you thinking of the multifamily on the um, southwest side, at least here? I'm going to have Jason, our one of our multifamily architects, answer the question in terms of the stories because he's got all this right in front of him. Jason, do you want to? Yeah, I'm happy to. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. Go ahead, Jason. And Jason is with Steinberg Hart. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm an architect and multifamily designer. I've been doing it for a while. I'm also joined by Doug Moss, uh, principal and partner from Steinberg Hart as well. Um, so you asked a question a little bit about courtyard housing uh, and the intent there and, <clears throat> pardon me, and the uh, level, number of stories, correct? So we actually have a significant grade change. Imagine par mentor is much higher than the pond naturally the stormwater goes down. So what we're actually gonna see from Parmenter is a range of three and four stories because we're actually sinking down a little bit of the parking, hiding it here, hiding it in the grade a little bit. And then as if you were to go, start to go east on Bella Fontaine, you'll start to see a five story um, building. Like when you come to that inter the first intersection there. So, that, but that's your, that's the maximum height we're looking at. We may even consider a taller story, uh, more levels, but that's really um, based on a number of factors, the design, cost of construction and other things. So we're, we're still hashing that out a little bit. But what, what you will see is a lot of variation in the height as well to break down the massing. And that's why we provide the courtyard housing as well to break up you know, the, the, the visual of very large buildings. And that's why you see a series of courtyards and courtyard buildings that are separated. 
And those courtyards will have a lot of diverse use, uses. You know, one might be a rose garden, one um, will have a fire pit area and, you know, there's just gonna, and everything will be open. So like the single family housing can come into the courtyards of the multifamily and the multifamily, so we want it all to be one community, which is why we also designed, so along the multifamily, we have the shotgun homes um, and that'll be a nice little, that'll just, integrated everything will feel as one instead of separate there were questions i guess i want to uh address there was uh somebody had asked the question um and jason i'll probably have you answer this and i can pull up the visual about the step someone had asked a question about the separation of the bike path the pedestrian path and the um some of the road networks and jason maybe you can start mm -hmm. talking about it and i'll try to get that one sure. I guess stop sharing okay. this one. It might be page 16. So there was a there's a diagram that Kathleen will pull up that shows the, the connectivity. It's the automobiles, it's the bicycles, it's pedestrians. Something that uh, Phil Tab and all of this team has has um, held Sorry. as very very important to the master plan. So we diagrammed all those connections. What we wanted to make sure is clear is that we don't have an intention of separating all of those uses. Like Can you guys instance, see that? Yes. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kathleen. So for instance, if you look at Parmenter, we're not, we're not saying Parmenter is that wide and that the pedestrians and bikes are all separated from each other. And this is really just a diagram to show that you're gonna see all those modes shared on Bellefontaine, Parmenter, and then through the site to make, make it very porous the, the connections. What we will be doing is as we move forward, we work with traffic analysis, civil engineer, landscape architect, Phil Tab, the master planner, to come up with street sections that would actually show how we would accommodate all of those modes. And also <clears throat> work with the city on that too to, to right size them. So the intent here is just to show the connectivity throughout the entire site. Thank you, Jason. You're and so, Kurt, you're done with your questions? For now, yes. OK. Randy? Randy Bruce? Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, I feel like Kurt does this. It's really refreshing to see a, a concept plan uh, of this, um, you know, of this design caliber and to see the mix of uses and, the, and uh, just how well thought it is. Uh, it's, uh, I, I want to commend the whole design team for that. My, uh, my only concern I have about the development is, is, uh, is Bellefontaine and uh, if, if uh, Public Works uh, can support that geometry and, and layout. I like the urban park a, a lot. Uh, I, I like the one-way um, Road network. I would love to see um, parallel parking um, kind of replace the angled parking along uh, along the park and along Bellefontaine to the extent possible. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the only only comment that I have. I think it's a beautiful project, and uh, really look forward to seeing the next steps. Thank you. I did talk with Phil today about the angled parking and it, it's not, um, we don't lose many spaces by, uh, you know, it's not um, a big impact to change that to parallel parking. So that's definitely something that can be accommodated. Thank you. So Randy, more questions or you're done? I'm done, thank you. Okay. Okay, anyone else, please raise your hands if you have a question for Kathleen or Jason, or you just want to make some comments. I do not, okay, Kurt Paulson is back. I, I, I want to give other people a chance, but um, as I see the site plan, almost all of your single family homes, including the shotgun homes, are alley loaded. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Is so that again? And Jason, could you maybe you could? I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Jason. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we do have, I believe, the estate homes that are fronting the pond. Do you mind if I draw on here? 
just architects, we just love to draw on everything. So these estate homes here, can everyone see what I've marked mm -hmm. on the screen here? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. That front. This is actually a local road that is serving all of these units. So it's going to be a little bit wider than an alley. Um, it will have a, a sidewalk. So those are served um, with a road. Um, <clears throat> the, the alleys do surround the urban park. So we can take some of that parking in those garages off of the park so you don't have curb cuts and yes. garage doors and driveways on that beautiful park. Uh, you can even see on, on this north-south street, same thing. So the shotgun homes that are on the left-hand side, we show an alley in the rear mm -hmm. to serve all that parking. That actually serves another purpose as well, is to, um, to uh, mitigate, <clears throat> probably not the favorable word to use, but it actually assists with transitioning from the taller, bigger multifamily down to a more house form street that runs north-south so that visually on that north-south street, you don't see the, the height of those multifamily buildings. What it also does is it provides a back door to the multifamily that is surrounded on all sides by very public oriented walkable frontages because you still need utilities, trash and other things. So it's, it's a way that we can actually hide some of that. Um, so I believe, I believe that probably touches on all the single family. Everything is um, yeah. alley loaded except for that road. And we Mark, see Mark's alleys as laughing. beautiful. We see, we see alleys as beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's Mark's laughing because I live in Middleton Hills, a new urbanist development. So it's that's mm. a design approach that we really appreciate. And I think, um, you know, and in Bellefontaine as well, a lot of those houses are alley loaded and closer together and closer to the street. And as you, as you've noticed, that creates a public realm for kids to play and seems to really slow down traffic. So uh, again, kudos to you on that design element. Thank you. A question I have that was posted on the comments was, and I, I think tonight would be a good night to just make sure we're, we understand this, is that access, that alley access to Parmenter Street. Um, Jason, I'll have you jump in there. Sure. Uh, I think that was someone, or that was quite, that was questioned. And I think Jason, um, I'll, I'll actually, I might actually have Jason, the, um, the diagram. Jason had, here. yeah, here's the diagram you had. Can you see that, Jason? Not yet. It hasn't transitioned. Oh, the okay. screen hasn't changed yet. Does it take a moment or should I stop sharing? And Yeah, I'm not sure why it's freezing. Okay. I'll stop share and reshare. Oh. Okay, so what Kathleen, yeah. what Kathleen is talking about is, is a comment about alleys and connections to Parmenter. Uh, Parmenter, as you go for north out of, out of Middleton, the, the speeds increase a little bit. I think we have a 35 mile per hour speed, speed limit, which is still pretty good. Um, but there was a comment that we wanted to limit the connections there. So what you see in this diagram, this this connectivity diagram is opportunities for visual and pedestrian connections through the multifamily. If someone's walking or biking along Parmenter, it's a very porous community. So for instance, if you live in one of the shotgun homes that's very centrally located, you can still easily get out to Parmenter. If you want to commute on a bike to downtown or go for a bike ride or walk your dog around the block, you're not forced to walk several hundred feet. The distance between Springton and Bella Fontaine is about 800 feet. Kathleen, do you have the other um, diagram, yeah, page I four? Thought, is, is this the one? Okay, um, I thought that's what I was showing. Should be the next page. Let's hear, it's the next page? Yeah. I apologize, I've got a couple different presentations here and what's showing on my screen is that one. Um, okay. Let me see if I can try again. Sorry, everyone, we, we wanna show a what we did is we were showing a comparison, a block and street comparison for okay, so. another part of Middleton. And we wanna show everyone and give a sense for what 800 feet, 800 foot distance is between Bellefontaine and, and Springton. There we go. Is it there? Yes. 
Great, okay, thank you. Great. I'm not going to touch anything because I can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These were some of the notes that we were we were providing internally, but everyone's free to to read them. So what we're seeing, what we're showing there on the left hand side is near. I apologize if it's called downtown Middleton or if you use another term for it, but what I've highlighted there is the, the street network. And you can actually see within 800 feet, it's three or four blocks of, of downtown mm -hmm. Middleton. So to give some frame of reference, um, the, the central alley that we show between Springton and, and um, Bella Fontaine serves multiple purposes. We at least start there and break that 800 feet down to 400 feet, which is a little bit more manageable, but still quite large. Um, that, that point there serves um, three purposes. There is a visual connection. There is a linear connection to that local road that becomes a, uh, that connects up to the urban park. So you can imagine if you're a pedestrian or on a bike, it's a great connection all the way up to the park. It also provides um, fire access to the multifamily sites. When the multifamily sites get really large, fire department can't serve them. There's hose pool lengths and all these other things and getting their truck. And so you naturally need to break those down those sites a little bit. So if we don't provide that, then when you develop that, you have to start providing fire access roads and hammerheads and a lot of measures that may not be favorable, you know, visually or just, you know, because you have to accommodate that. So what we do here is we break down the multifamily so we can provide that access and control that so that we can do it thoughtfully to connect through the neighborhood. Um, one other thing that we are proposing is there's going to be a lot of multifamily housing units, several hundred, right? So that's, that could be a lot of cars. So if they're all coming in on Bellefontaine or Springden and they're forced into an internal road, you can start to see that there's a lot more cars. And so we want to um, disperse them a little bit. So if we can get a connection to Parmenter halfway between Bellefontaine and Springden, it's a great opportunity to, to spread out that parking a little bit, focus it to the multifamily. So the multifamily isn't also driving through the single family neighborhood to get to the parking. So those are the few considerations that we made. The additional connections that you see between, um, between that alley and, and Springton and Bellefontaine, like I said, are thoughtful locations where we can break down the massing of the multifamily and provide uh, pedestrian and bicycle connections. Uh, Jason, your multifamily is about uh, 90 to 100 units per complex. I know total uh, is 560. Mm -hmm. So um, this, if we're looking just south of Bellefontaine, this is mm -hmm. one of your, the one of the larger that is almost 200 units. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Which is actually a good number. That's um, multifamily housing projects that you see at four and five stories and you get a good healthy density or that's a pretty good number to start with. Okay. Kurt, do you have more questions? Yeah. So um, on this diagram, the uh, Springton Road that you're showing, my understanding is east of Parliament Street, that doesn't exist right now. That's just a parking access to the uh, uh, nearby business. So, um, I mean, there, there'll be, it's just a minor design issue, but it's not actually a road, it's just parking access to the business. But um, the other question is then the, the discharge of Bellefontaine at Parmenter on the west side of the property, is that right at Schneider Road? You don't so, show yeah. Schneider Road here. Right, Schneider Road is getting clipped there by the aerial photo that we had. So we, we've purposely aligned Bellefontaine and, and Schneider. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. To, to answer your question or, you, or to respond to Springden Road, we're working with uh, the civil engineer. I believe the road that you see there now might be a half right of way. So this project would provide the other half right of way for the, for the future road. Does that, am I correct there, Kathleen? Yeah, and Bruce, are that, you on? Oh Bruce yeah, there's, Bruce is on as well, yeah. I don't know if Bruce wants to comment on that. Bruce? I think he's uh, looking for the mute button. Okay. We'll give him a moment. 
There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Bruce. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, I was actually going to bring that up with, uh, with um, maybe Mark or um, following up with uh, Kurt's question. The Springton Road is, has that ever been, um, has that ever been anticipated as it being extended across there as part of this, of, of this overall, um, of an overall future land use for this area? Um, and the reason I ask is because the certified survey map of the property just south of ours has a 40 foot access easement and the, um, you know, and it all, everything kind of lines up to the west, to Springton Road on the, on the west. And, you know, I guess, and, and maybe this, maybe this needs to come up at tomorrow's staff meeting, but um, is there an opportunity for the city to assist in, in um, having that road, I mean, we, you know, making that a public street? Um, I mean, ideally, it, it, it's a it's a good connection, and it feels like it was kind of set up or positioned to do that, based on our documents and our uh, and the surveys that we've come up with. Um, so I'm just wondering if that was if that was um, anticipated for a future roadway. Bruce, I don't know the answer to that. But I, um, I, we, from a city staff standpoint, we we really support grids, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think it makes a lot of sense, and I'm happy to include that in our discussion tomorrow with the, with our staff meeting. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Mark. Any so, Kurt, you are done. You are done. Kurt Parson. Yes, I'm done. Okay, Randy Bruce. Randy Bruce. Yeah. I just uh, wanted to follow up on the comment uh, regarding access, uh, additional access uh, to Parmenter Street uh, between Springton and Bellefontaine. And it looks like we've got one, one alley connection there. Uh, the other connections are pedestrian, is that correct? And uh, did you, is there, would there be any benefit to making that alley just a continuation of that of the curved road that it, it connects to? Uh, that's worth considering. I think we should put all let Kathleen respond to that. I think it's definitely worth noting. Um, and I can debrief with Bruce and Jason and Doug and and Phil and and talk that over. I, I, I don't see why not, but I also don't want to, you know, um, I want to understand the, what I'm saying, <laughs> you know, I want to understand the ramifications of all of that. I do, I do have a response though to that, uh, that I think maybe we've talked about a little bit, Kathleen, with Phil, is that um, we, we're definitely embracing this connectivity and permeability across the site. Mm -hmm. but also want to be thoughtful about traffic flow. And for instance, if there's a lot of traffic going through bon Bellefontaine, we want to encourage residents and people who know the way around to, to use the local road, but not to find like a cut through or something where you end up just seeing a lot of traffic and people going around an intersection. I and remember so, that conversation. And yes. so you can imagine if someone's here or if this isn't, I'll go back for a second. I think what, if that happens, someone could do this to do the cut through, right? And then you might end up bringing too much traffic in here that that may be less desirable. So that that's only one, I think one consideration of thought that we've, we've had. So if you provide more bends, it may discourage the cut through, but still encourage local residents. Yeah. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, I have a question for you now. For the parameter, we are going to be making it four lane next year or year later. So would that impact this development in any way at all? I don't remember the exact timing, Mayor, sorry, but uh, okay. they would, obviously we have a certain right of way that, that 
uh, we have been anticipating for Parmenter Street, and I'm sure that they're, well, I would think that their plan accommodates that. I, I can't speak for the development team. Bruce, can you comment on that? Yeah, we just, um, you know, we, I'm assuming that the, the, um, the right-of-way has already been established based on the property that, that Kathleen owns. So I, we didn't anticipate any additional right-of-way being, um, being taken. Okay. Um, that I'm gonna, well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, actually, yeah, as it gets wider as you go north of Springton. Yep. So I, th I think that's a good assumption. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. All right, so that's all set. Okay, any further questions or comments? Otherwise, we just need to recommend to various committees, right? Is that how we do, Mark, now then? Yes, you'll be pleased to know, especially Commissioner Paulson, that the right of way north of Springton is hundred and over 160 feet wide. So Kurt <laughs> likes to have these wide roads. No. <laughs> that, that's a good joke, Kurt, right? Yes, <laughs> go on a road diet. Yes, is what we need. Okay. okay, so who is ready to make a recommendation to committees or otherwise I will, so. Okay. Um, I may make a recommendation uh, to send it the ball bell fountain alignment and cross section uh, refer to public works committee and public park land location between two segments of the bell fountain to parks recreation of forestry commission and for stream running along the property I recommend the refer to water sources management commission. Mark, does that cover everything, those three committees, or is there anything else? I think that sounds very thorough, I think, and that's what uh, Abby recommended, so that I recorded that. So I we don't it, need anything more now then, right, or do we? If you want, it, so the staff recommendation, in addition to the referral, was to discuss the concept and refer it. If you, you know, if you, if you have feedback, I mean, obviously, the, I, I've been noting some of your feedback, um, but, you know, if you... It's up to you what you want to do with the concept. If it's just a and, referral, that's perfectly fine. And but Mark, we just don't to want. Be, mm -hmm. Just Mark, to be clear, there will be a traffic impact study or traffic impact analysis at the GIP stage. Oh yes. And they they may actually request that some of those curb cuts on Parmenter of the multifamily be taken out. <clears throat> I didn't hear a second though, Mayor, unless I missed it. I'll second or let someone else do it. Oh, okay. So uh, if there's anything which you want to add, Mark or Kathleen or uh, any of the others, uh, you know, I think we I all like it. It's, it's, it's really great. So Kathleen, do you need anything more now? Randy, your hand is up. I think I, so, unless Melissa has anything that she'd like to ask. I, I was just wondering whether we uh, could give the plan concept plan approval to give them a little bit more um, reassurance. I'm okay. Okay, I'm I'm okay with that. So, that is everybody great, else? so Thank Kurt, you. are you happy with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. So Mark, you can put that in there. So I assume that's another friendly amendment. Uh, so the motions by Briar seconded by Paulson to endorse the concept and yep, to refer yep. it to, and then the, the committees as indicated. Yep, yep. Or to conceptually okay. approve the project. Do you want conceptually approve the project or endorse, what words do you want to use? Conceptually approve. Okay. Yes. Yep, yep. Okay, any further questions or comments? Otherwise, motion is to conceptually approve the project and recommend it to the Public Works Committee, Park Recreation and Forestry Commission, and Water Resources Management Commission for items as listed over here. All those in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Kathleen, Jason, Bruce, and uh, Melissa, let's get it done. So anyway, it's- <laughs> Was there anybody there. else? Let's see, J who else was with the development team? Jason was there, Kathleen? Jason and yeah. Doug from, St Doug, Jason and Doug are with Steinberg Hart. 
Um, okay. And then Melissa uh, Huggins from Urban Assets and Bruce Holler from D'Onofrio Kotke. And Phil could not be here tonight, but he does plan to be at future meetings. So Jason, well, thank you for your plan and thank you for your time. Thank you. And what's Doug's last Let's name? Let's make it happen Moss. now. Moss. Yep. Okay. Got okay. It. I was just going to say yeah. the the property across the street is currently for sale. If you want to <laughs> expand on the project, I would love to. <laughs> take, that, take that as a uh, off the record comment. <laughs> Let, let's it's get what they have there. is done. It's. <laughs> It's pretty Thanks. massive product, so it's just great. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are on to the last item now. This is the item number four, which we just delayed. This is the specific implementation plan modification for design review of uh, second building, Capital Flight 8264 Airport Road. Mayor? Mayor, Mayor, yep. oh, sorry. Yep. I uh, I'm going to recuse myself on this issue. Oh, okay. Okay. And all right. And I was going to give to your attention. Oh, go ahead, Kurt. If you weren't done, sorry. I'm done. Oh, I was just going to draw to your attention an email that we received at 7:45, which I forwarded to you. The applicant's requesting postponement. He said he had to leave because of childcare and out, and because the. The item was placed or rearranged, I guess, is what he's saying. So he had to okay. leave. So he's requesting postponement. Okay. Well, somebody want to make a motion, so that's that's fine. So, oh, well, what do you think? I'll I'll move for uh, postponement to the next uh, plan commission meeting. Or just some later meeting. So whenever it may be. So, okay, okay, I second it. Any further questions or comments? This should make everyone happy. All those in favor of the motion to postpone this at a further, further date, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Neither. Anybody wants to share any good news or exciting stuff before we adjourn? Okay. Need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second by okay, second. By, okay, second by Mike Stavish. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn and go for dinner, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Well, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.